Hello, and welcome to my Pokemon tutorial on Poke Radar Chaining. This tutorial will show you how to chain your own shiny Pokemon. So basically, in the fourth generation Pokemon games, Pearl, Diamond, and Platinum, the Poke Radar will allow you to use a method often referred to as chaining. With this method, you can greatly increase your chances of encountering a shiny Pokemon in the tall grass. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you it's always going to be easy, but with a little bit of practice and remembering a handful of rules, you can use this method to catch a legitimate shiny Pokemon, sometimes less than an hour. As I go over the steps, you'll want to know to catch your first shiny Pokemon using chaining. Watch for clickable links on the video. I'll also add these to the description for easy access. First thing you want to do is get prepared. Uh, first, you're going to want to choose a target, and I'd recommend going for something that's easy to capture. My recommendations would probably be Shanks, Bidoof, Sarly, or maybe a Swarm Pokemon for the day. Swarm Pokemon have a high appearance rate and they make chaining a little bit more forgiving if you make a mistake on accident. You're going to want to be careful while catching certain types of Pokemon. It's generally a good rule of thumb to study what you catch before you start chaining it. This includes Pokemon that know moves like Explode, Whirlwind, or Roar. Make sure you bring abilities that counter things like this to prevent the battle from being ended prematurely. If the Pokemon you want to chain knows a move like Explode, bring a Pokemon like Polyrath that knows Damp. If the Pokemon you want to chain knows a move like Whirlwind or Roar, make sure to bring Octillery who has suction cups. Learning what moves your chain Pokemon knows ahead of time can help you prepare for a potentially frustrating situation that will cause you to lose your shiny before you have a chance to catch it. You're going to want to make sure you have prepared a Pokemon to catch your target. Uh, make sure you have both the high level Pokemon for quickly fainting, the Pokemon you want to chain with plenty of power points also known as PP. Make sure this Pokemon can use uh, its moves at least 40 times without running out of power points. You're also going to want a Pokemon that's ideal at catching the type of Pokemon you wish to encounter. Moves like Super Fang and False Swipe are a good idea because they lower the Pokemon's health without fainting it. One thing you want to keep in mind is that some Pokemon know moves that hurt themselves after they use them, kind of like Double Edge. So keep this in mind when you're lowering the health of the shiny Pokemon you want to catch. Because if you lower it too far and it uses one of those moves, it could result in it fainting itself and then you won't catch it. Other moves that are helpful uh, include Thunder Wave, Hypnosis, or Sleep Powder. Using these moves give a status effect to the other Pokemon, which makes them a lot easier to catch. If you haven't trained a Pokemon yet with some of those moves, I'd suggest Gallade. Uh, Gallade can learn Thunder Wave, Hypnosis, False Swipe, and Mean Look. There's one last thing I want to mention about the Pokemon that you bring with you. Many people that hunt for Shinies and actually plan on using them competitively use a Fainted Synchronizer in the lead of their party. Bringing a Synchronizer and lead your party allows you to have a 50% chance of each Pokemon you encounter having the same nature as that Synchronizer in your party. If you don't want to use the Synchronization trick, you can also uh, improve your chances of keeping your chain by using Pokemon with abilities like Static, and that would actually improve your chance of chaining an Electric Pokemon or Magnet Pull, which would do the same for Steel types. You're going to want to make sure that you have both the Poke Radar and the Pokemon application number 20. The Poké Raider is obtained after you defeat the Elite Four and have completed the Sino Pokédex. What you have to do is go talk to Professor Rowan in his lab, and after doing this, you'll be rewarded with the Poké Radar. You'll need this device to chain um, before you can go for Shinies with it. You're also going to need, uh, like I said before, Pokémon Application Number 20. You'll need to visit the Pal Park, and after you do that, Professor Oak will hand it off to you. He'll basically just give it to you on your first visit out there if you don't already have it. The application keeps track of how many Pokemon you've chained, uh, what Pokemon you're currently training, and it will also alert you if you have accidentally broken your chain. Chaining can actually be pretty expensive. Before you gather supplies, you're going to want to make sure you have plenty of cash. If you're low on funds, I'd suggest using the Versus Seeker to fight the gentleman and socialite on Route 121, south of Heart Home City. If you put an amulet coin on the lead Pokemon that you fight them with, you'll get about 24,000 Poke Dollars each. Um, what you're going to want to buy are a whole bunch of uh, repels, at least about 300. Max repels and super repels will both be fine. Um, max repels aren't as cost efficient as super repels in terms of steps taken for the dollars spent, but they do allow you to spend a lot more time chaining and a lot less time opening your menu and respraying yourself. These are necessary to prevent random encounters that will break your chain. I'd also recommend setting these to the top of your items menu for easy access. This can be done using the select button. You're going to want to choose an area that has a lot of grass in it. The more grass in the area, the better, as a general rule of thumb. And in this video, I've chosen to chain in the area that has Bidoof, because who doesn't love Bidoof? 
Uh, nobody. That's who. Now, before you actually start chaining, what I usually do before I even get started is I like to save right outside the grass area I'm in. And the reason I do this is to save on cost, basically. So if you save before you start chaining and you go through all kinds of max repels and super repels and you break your chain, instead of just starting over from scratch, you can just restart your game and reload your save. And what this does, it actually prevents you from not only having to waste a bunch of your repels without having caught a shiny, but it also saves you trips to the Poke Center, so you don't have to go reheal your Pokemon or refill their power points. Now you're going to want to start chaining. The first thing you're going to want to do is use a max repel or a super repel before you start stepping into the grass. And what this will do is prevent you from having a random encounter while you're chaining between shaking patches of grass. Now that you're in the grass, all you have to do is make sure that you're standing in a patch of it and activate the poker radar. And what you'll notice is there's going to be anywhere between one and four shaking patches of grass. This will be significant for reasons I'll explain later on, but all you need to know for now to start your chain is you just need to walk into one of those patches. If you are aiming to chain a Pokemon that is only found in the Poke Radar, you're going to want to step in one of the glowing patches because you're not going to find them in the regular shaking patches. It's also helpful to remember if you are going for a Poke Radar only Pokemon that you're going to have to make sure every subsequent patch you step into is also a glowing patch. Uh, now you're going to have an encounter, and all you really have to do at this point is make sure that you either faint or capture the Pokemon. Doing either of these will start the chain. Now you're probably thinking, that's great, Sean, but what's the point of this? Well, every time you increase the number of Pokemon you've chained, the chances of a shiny showing up on your radar greatly improve. Uh, this is effective until you've reached about 40 Pokemon in your chain. Uh, chaining more after this still increases the chance, but it's just really insignificant. Once you've chained about 40, it's best to stop trying to increase the chain number and to actually start just resetting the radar over and over until you've found a shiny patch. Okay, so what I've done here is I've prepared a little graphic here to help me explain some of the basics of continuing your chain. The first thing you notice is there's actually going to be a blue colored grid around your character and that has little number ones on it and that actually represents uh, the patches of grass that are one step away from you. And then the lighter blue grid uh, represents the patches of grass that are about two spaces away from you and, and you get the idea. What you need to do is aim for the patches of grass when your poker radar activates and the four patches shake is you want to shoot for the red ring that has the numbers four written on them. Now you're probably wondering why there's an X on some of those squares. The X's here represent a piece of grass that is either A bordering a square with no grass or B bordering a square next to an object like a cave wall or a rock or a tree or a fence. You have to stay away from those patches because they could easily break your chain. The patch of grass uh, that will continue your chain has to be four squares away, but if it's along one of those edges or objects, um, there's a good chance stepping into those is going to stop your chain and you'll fail. Um, the reason for that is when the four patches of grass choose to activate, they can actually be outside of the grass that you're standing in. And if all four of those and you're unlucky just happen to locate themselves in areas outside of the grass, your chain will just simply end. You're going to want to make sure to teach yourself to avoid moving directly up, and the reason for that is if you look at the picture, you can see that your trainer's head covers almost that entire square of grass, and it's pretty difficult to tell if the patch is shaking or not. Um, the only time I'd actually recommend moving directly up is if you reset the radar and you actually see all four patches of grass shaking, and you know the one above you isn't one of them. You're going to want to stay off your bike. If you hop onto it, the music's going to change, and you're going to notice that your chain breaks instantly. Um, an actual shiny patch of grass will always have the Pokemon you've been chaining in it, and it doesn't have to necessarily be after you've chained 40. It can happen anywhere between 1 and 40. 40 is just what you want to shoot for, because that's when your chances are really good. Um, don't let your excitement get the best of you if you do see one. Just stay focused on your screen and approach it carefully. You don't want to bump into one of those non-shiny patches and break your chain. Um, if you do catch or even faint that shiny Pokemon, your chain will actually continue, so you can keep catching more shinies after that initial one, and a lot of times that's what you'll try to do. I've already went over a couple things that can break your chain, but just a reminder of all the most common things that will break your chain, 
um, make sure that you do not step in the patch of grass above you or in the shaking patches in these zones in the graphic that I have up between 1 and 3. You always want to go in the shaking patch of grass that's four spaces away from you or you will likely break your chain. Make sure that you always have a max repel or a super repel on your, on your trainer at all times. Um, you don't want to ride your bike and you don't want to run away from the wild Pokemon or be kicked out of the battle with it for moves like Roar or Whirlwind. There's another thing to note too, if you uh, see a shaking patch of grass that's four squares away and it's adjacent to another shaking patch of grass, which is basically above it, below it, or to the left or right of it, just reset the radar. Sometimes if there's another patch directly adjacent to the patch that you want to go for, it seems to break your chain, so just avoid it. Reset the radar, it's better to play it safe. Um, once your chain's started, you need to stay in the grass area that you're in, and you can save your game at any time, but turning it off and reloading the game will break your chain. You can put the game into standby if you want to take a break, and that's typically a good idea because if you start getting bored or tired, you'll probably mess your chain up. You're probably wondering what a shiny patch actually looks like. Here's a shot of a shiny patch and a clickable link that leads to a video of what the shiny patch looks like in-game. Trust me though, when you see it, you'll know. The shining patch containing your shiny Pokemon stands out from all the previous patches you've seen. It'll pulse twice with a bright color, and it'll last longer than the normal shaking or glowing patches that you've been seeing. With a little luck and a lot of practice, you should be able to chain your own shiny Pokemon. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and feel free to leave any comments or suggestions below, and good luck with your future hunts.